Hello and welcome to Autoinform magazine. My name is Frank Massey. This feature is a presentation taken from our foundation training program. And the reason I've chosen this for the magazine is to emphasize the importance that process is the key to diagnostic success. What I mean by process is the way you evaluate a vehicle, the choice of tools, how to handle everything from the contract, the agreement with the customer, to the choice of procedure, and then the actual process itself. How do we break down methodically, efficiently, and effectively the test sequences that will bring the conclusion, the correct conclusion, to a diagnostic problem? I'd like to begin by just emphasizing that the key choices that, that are, are made early in, the, in this process or procedure. There is an agreement or a contract. Now, of course, the key to this is that the contract is an agreement in terms of what we can offer technically to the customer and what the customer is prepared to pay us for. And we've approached this in a modular format and the reason we do that is that unlike other repair sequences diagnostics is an unknown quantity until you actually um, start getting involved in tests and the, the, the results of those tests. From the contract I'd suggest a, a visual examination. The detail of that visual examination depends on the nature of the fault of course and, and which area of the vehicle we're working on. So a visual check is and you always remain vigilant and visual whatever repair you're conducting that's an ongoing process you then effectively have a number of choices but the key first choice is what i call a global serial check by global i mean bumper to bumper why should we look at the entire vehicle when perhaps we're concentrating on engine or transmission or braking we have network vehicles the network can networks share data and information. It could well be that the fault um, is stored in a peripheral system um, of less priority. It could be that there are other faults in these systems that require evaluation and may present a further opportunity for repair. So the serial evaluation is the most important. I am increasingly relying on serial information what I don't rely on is the conclusion presented by the serial information. In other words, I will always challenge it to make sure that it's, that it's accurate, that how, is it, how has it been, um, how has that serial information been gathered and, 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 and can it be trusted? How should we challenge it? So from the serial investigation, we're really coming to two other potential uh, procedures. The first one, of course, is electronic. That's one opportunity. And the second is mechanical, hydraulic and pneumatic. So I think we'll, we'll put that under a common heading. Let's go down the serial route first of all. How best do we manipulate serial data? Well, the first opportunity, I guess, is a simple DTC. Do I trust it? Not at all. There's not enough value in that to establish why it's been stored as a fault or indeed why the cause uh, has been recognised. Often DTCs represent symptoms, not cause, and we need to be absolutely sure what the, the prime cause of the fault is. What I trust more than that is live data. Now, live data... Um, is a bit of a misnomer because it's not actually in real time. Be very careful that, that the data you read is being updated at, at, at real time speed. Um, it's quite possible you have a fault that's not being shown necessarily by looking at values through a scan tool. After live data, um, we really need to look at how the ECU is handling this potential defect. And it falls into a series of events, if you like. The first event is request.
Now, request is a command. It can be a window regulator. What's the request for window regulation? You put your finger on the button and you depress it. It could be a simple switch, voltage. It can be a CAN message or LIN message. But it is still a command, a request to do something. The request from an APP sensor, accelerator pedal position or throttle potentiometer, is a load input request to control the fueling of the engine. A request for ABS, brake operation, maybe a brake pedal switch. So the request can be a simplistic or complex set of events which must be in place. So you must understand the schematics of the system. What does it require to function correctly? And what could go wrong that causes the system to malfunction? And that's why I suggest that we do a global serial check. Something as simple as a bonnet catch may prevent the vehicle from engaging transmission, which would appear to be a serious fault, but a simple bonnet catch switch can, many, in many cases, prevent that. So we need a request. We then look at the specified values. This is the software, the setup tables or, or, or basic uh, parameters from which the system operates. So the specified value is contained within the software parameters. So we have a request. It then compares that request with the specified values. If they match, then the system will deliver the correct functionality. If it doesn't match and there's deviation for whatever reason, we'll come to why that deviation may exist, there'll be a corrective or correction or adaption. So we'll call it correction. The really smart way to look at serial data is not necessarily to look at specified values, but to look at corrective values, because where a default, a default exists or a defect exists, there may not be a DTC, but you may see correction values starting to, to increase progressively, suggesting there's something not right. When the correction process fails to address the situation, it will then come to a default, in other words, that the value of a component, sensor or input, or even response. That will then set a DTC. So from correction, when correction becomes sufficient, a DTC will be set. That's why I don't trust DTCs entirely, because I don't know why that corrective action has been put in place. Um, is it a sensor fault? Is it a wiring fault? Is it a physical fault? Um, we, we just don't know at this point. And the final stage of serial evaluation, of course, is the actual value. And it obviously makes some sense that the request value should be met or, 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 be, or be the same as actual with no correction. And that, of course, request specified and actual should always agree. The value should be closely matched. And you can manage this simply whilst driving the car and logging data, looking at live data through the scan tool. So that will establish where the fault symptoms exist, but where there is a problem, say where correction is taking place, it could be a result of an electronic issue or mechanical or hydraulic issue. So let's, let's take a look at the next route, which is electronic. How do we then evaluate a input, um, which is a request? Well, the first thing we always check is the output. So whatever the component functionality is, go for outputs first. If the output is correct, now of course you have to have good known data to predict if the output value is correct. You also have to use the correct method of measurement. If it's voltage in real time, we use the oscilloscope. If it's current flow, then we also use the oscilloscope with inductive current clamp. So the output value of, should we say, a fuel pump is hydraulic, it's pressure and flow. That would come under the the mechanical uh, route. If that's defective, the next functionality of a, a fuel pump is the current flow through the circuit. And that will be the second check. So the, the process that we're developing here is a balance of different tools supporting data as we progress through the symptoms of the fault. So the first thing we check is output. The second thing we check electronically is the request or input. We then move on to voltage.
ground. And of course, current we've mentioned. If it's movement related, we then move on to the environment. What conditions it operate under? Is it mechanically seized? And finally, it could be a software issue, adaption, or even coding or programming. Having established a procedure for the electronic route, let's take a look now at the possibilities down the, me the mechanical or hydraulic or pneumatic route. And we're dealing here with obviously fluid pressures or maybe uh, air pressure perhaps with the turbo. So one of the first processes we may wish to, to undergo is an integrity test with say an air intake system where we'd use a smoke test. That would prove if, if a system um, has uh, integrity, no, no, no pressure loss, no external um, leaks or even the EGR valve, uh, which would uh, cause an increase in the flow uh, rather than the loss of pressure. Moving on for that, we might want to establish uh, fluid checks. I mentioned that the output of a fuel pump is pressure and flow, so uh, we'd use actual gauges, hydraulic gauges, we wouldn't rely just on serial data perhaps to provide us with an answer. We'd want to be sure that that sensor is reporting the right physical condition. In other words, the environment. The environment in a fuel pump system effectively is the hydraulic performance, the control of which we've mentioned is current. Uh, the fuel pump uh, has movement, therefore it requires current to drive it. But the environment, it could be a black fuel filter causing a high current flow, causing a DTC, causing um, the engine to run lean. The DTC may suggest a lambda error, a fuel trim error, but the actual cause could be environment, hydraulic, a blockage. So process of a combination of approach and logic thought process is really what, what we're suggesting here. So in terms of hydraulic tests, we do pressure and flow and we've adapted and designed and evolved gauges that, that provide us with the right functionality so that we have flexibility in these tests, that these tools help us accurately to diagnose the fault um, by comparing real-time data, whether it be mechanical or electronic, with, with serial data. In terms of common rail, perhaps, we then do what we call a, a proof test. Now, a proof test effectively is if we're dealing with a hydraulic pump, can we drive that pump to a higher pressure? If we do, do we get the right response? Does the pressure increase? And of course, if we increase physical load, then the current will increase. So once again, there's a combination of tools that provide us with a very accurate picture of what's happening. The logic here is that if we have a problem, Let's say we have a DTC. Why has that occurred? Is it an electronic problem? Is the range of the sensor wrong? Is the environment it measures wrong? In other words, it's actually telling us that there is actually a fault within that environment. Has the environment been affected because of a blockage, increasing pressure? Could the DTC be due to the fact that we have a voltage supply problem to the sensor? or a poor ground. Could it be a software problem? Perhaps the component uh, requires readaption. Uh, idle control devices, pressure regulation devices often require readaption. It could be it's physically dirty, contaminated, in which case a flushing process. That would probably come under the, the mechanical hydraulic route. Perhaps we need to flush and clean a component first before setting the adaption through the software. It could be we've replaced a valve, an EGR valve perhaps, because of a DTC, correctly identifying a faulty valve. We fit the valve, the vehicle doesn't operate correctly initially because we've not reset the adaption value that the computer uses to control the device. In other words, it's gone beyond its adaption range. Correction couldn't cope. It's presented a DTC suggesting a faulty EGR. We've identified the DTC. We've done a smoke test to prove that the EGR valve actually is faulty, or perhaps part of its electronic functionality is faulty. Maybe it's a current problem through the actual solenoid. 
we've replaced the valve, we've cleaned or flushed the engine and reset the adaption. So you can see it's a very flexible approach. Whatever type of fault the vehicle has, whether it's serial, hydraulic, pneumatic or electronic, this process can be adapted from the most simplistic component, a coolant sensor perhaps, to a very complex component which builds within its capability to diagnose and prove the true cause of the error before replacement is considered. It's very effective. It's evolved over the years throughout our practical experience as a commercial repair business and it's something we constantly update due to changing design perhaps of vehicles and systems and also perhaps the introduction of new tools and new techniques. But the core process which I've just developed and gone through hasn't changed a great deal. It's proved very effective and very reliable and it ensures that the quickest possible diagnosis and therefore repair uh, is guaranteed. If you've enjoyed this feature on procedure and process and choice of tools, then why not join us in our face-to-face -face training program, beginning with the foundation module, building through a set of in-depth training programs and modules on all subjects with the modern vehicle systems. In addition, we have a comprehensive range of DVDs where you can use within your own business at your own pace. Remember that Auto Inform has a great deal of archive footage with many procedures and processes that we've evolved over the years of our commercial repair business. Thank you for joining me in this feature. I look forward to seeing you in the next magazine. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, please visit the Auto Inform website for both details of our face-to-face -face training and DVD learning modules. We are also able to supply a selection of diagnostic tools. Thank <laughs> you.